Qatar claims it is unfairly under attack by Saudi Arabia and other Arab countries. Just about all the leaders involved in this drama were together with President Donald Trump when he visited the Saudi capital Riyadh in May. After that, as shown by a shouting match this week at an Arab League meeting in Cairo, the Saudis, joined by the United Arab Emirates, Egypt and others, have been pressing a set of demands. For instance, that Qatar greatly reduce its relations with Iran and that Qatar's TV station Al Jazeera be shut down because the Saudis and others claim Al Jazeera in Arabic supports unrest and even terrorist groups. Paid for by Saudi interests, commercials aired on American cable TV claimed Qatar backs terrorism. Now here in Washington, there's word that Qatar is fighting back with a public relations campaign. Hiring, it's reported, more lobbyists believed to have connections with the Trump White House and a PR agency tasked with reaching out to American Jews. Why does an Arab country, the state of Qatar, care what Jews think? Jonathan Shanzer, vice president of research at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. The Qataris probably are working under the assumption that Jews are influential, that Jews are influential in Washington, that they're influential in the United States, and that if they want to win this PR battle with the Saudis and the Emiratis and the Egyptians and the Bahrainis, that they need to go to some of the influentials in Washington. Of course, the Arab state of Qatar won't claim to be pro-Israel. The message that we're seeing right now from the Qataris is, look, we love Jews, but we don't love the country where Jews are a majority. The emir of Qatar, 37-year-old Sheikh Tamim Al Thani, has invited leaders of American Jewish groups to meet with him in New York this month. It's believed some will. I think it's a difficult argument for the Qataris to make. I think it's one they're ultimately going to lose. I think this is probably money down the drain, but that won't stop them from making this effort on the sidelines of the UN. A full-page newspaper ad by the World Values Network, backed by Jews who are politically conservative, says meeting with Qatar condones murder. I-24 News also spoke with Matthew Brodsky, a senior fellow at the Security Studies Group. Qatar is in a diplomatic crisis. It's not a surprise they would try to have a better public face. They've been long preaching in their own media, specifically Al Jazeera, that the Jews run Washington. So I'm sure they figure, why not throw some money at them and see if they can change public perceptions and, of course, change uh, the political story inside the White House. What do you think of Qatar's argument that it shouldn't be pushed toward Iran. Yeah, I know. It's what, what everyone says. They, uh, please don't make me light more fires. And then, uh, oh, but please pay me to put out the fire as the firemen. I mean, they're being their own arsonist. It's not a matter of uh, putting an advertisement or a little Band-Aid on it. I mean, how do you go speak to Jews and say that we're for you and we're great people, but support the Muslim Brotherhood, support Hamas, and basically support the destruction of the only Jewish state. It makes absolutely no sense. Several American Jewish activists have said that if Qatar keeps funding Hamas, even in the guise of helping charities in the Gaza Strip, but knowing the money goes to anti-Israel fighters, then Jews are not interested in helping Qatar change its image. Dan Raviv, I-24 News, Washington.